Today in Bite Size, we're going to explore dynamic link libraries and virtual device drivers. Operating systems like Windows, OS2 and NT are built in a kind of layer cake fashion. The applications programs sit atop of a cake, they are the frosting, but they sit atop layers of cake and filling. These layers are essential. Two important parts are dynamic link libraries and virtual device drivers. The bottom layer of the cake is the hardware. In some senses, you can summarize the job of an operating system this way. The applications programs, the word processor, the email programs, spreadsheet or any games need things done for them by the hardware the video board, the network card, hard disk, and so on. But if every application tries to use a piece of hardware at the same time, nothing works. What you need is a kind of traffic cop between the apps and the hardware. The OS is that cop. The piece in between that routes hardware requests between applications and hardware, keeping traffic jams to a minimum and crashes non-existent, well, in theory anyway. The lowest level of system software is the set of programs that are customised to particular pieces of hardware. These programs, called drivers, attach in a modular fashion to the main body of the OS, called the kernel. For example, in order to get Windows to recognise that you use your Hewlett Packard LaserJet Model 5P, you must load a driver for that printer, adding it into the Windows system software. Drivers can pose a bit of a problem for software stability. Most of the operating system is designed by a close-knit software development team, but most Windows drivers, and this was more apparent in the 90s, aren't written by Microsoft. Instead, the burden of writing driver programs usually fell to hardware vendors, and programmers working at these companies don't get the same kind of support that they would do at Microsoft. And this is why we sometimes get driver compatibility issues. Under DOS, hardware was accessed directly or through a DOS driver, this was fine when programs held exclusive control, but in multitasking environments like Windows, programs called virtual device drivers were introduced. Rather than allowing communication directly to hardware, they in fact emulated the hardware as a virtual device for each program, only passing access to the raw hardware when it was appropriate to do so. When control was passed at an inappropriate time, for example, when it was already being accessed by another program, then you'd also get a crash. Windows 98 onwards introduced a Windows driver model. This allowed closer integration with the base hardware. Another term you may be familiar with is the DLL, or Dynamic Link Library. A library is a file containing a bunch of small programs that get a particular thing done. It's called a library for two reasons. First, there are usually many of those small programs in a particular library. And second, the library file resembles a library in that it is publicly available. These programs are available for any application. For example, the program that tells Windows how to change the colour of a part of the screen is almost certainly a part of the library. Now, the question of how a program finds a library is called linking. For most of the history of computer programming, libraries get linked when a program called the link editor makes a copy of the desired library routines and incorporates these routines directly into the program. This is called static linking. Now, static linking was, and indeed is, bad because if you are running three programs that all know how to print, then you're wasting RAM because you've now got three copies of the print routine resident in memory. Secondly, if the way that the OS wants an application to print changes, then every application would have to be rebuilt. Operating systems in use since the early 80s incorporate a different type of linking called dynamic linking. Under dynamic linking, a dynamic link library is relinked every time the application calls for one of its library routines. Take the example of printing. Under static linking, a program gets the whole library program inserted into it. A program linked dynamically to a library only contains a note that says, in essence, when you need this routine, go to print.dll, load it up and link the routine before going any further. A DLL can also be shared. Once one program has print.dll in memory, any other programs needing print.dll gets the one copy that's already in memory, rather than loading another one. Now, as with drivers, these libraries can sometimes cause problems. Sometimes when you install new software, it will replace a dynamic link library with a version of its own, and this library, more often than not, causes compatibility issues with other programs you are running. So, that is a quick roundup of DLL files and virtual device drivers and how they integrate with our Windows and other operating systems.